Hi, micro folks. Um, this is March 17th, 2020, and we're doing some lab videos um, because of the coronavirus um, epidemic. We can't meet in lab, so we're trying to show you some of these procedures by doing these movies. So folks, just sorry, this is that catalase test, so it just really went to town. Um, you'll recall that initially when we did it with the staph epi, the staph epi was old, so we couldn't quite see it, but it just really went to town. So I'm just hoping you can see what a great amount of um, gas that positive catalase test produced. And that was using E. coli. Okay, folks, so, but what we're really interested in is we're going to do some movies for Chapter 4 in our lab manual in the spring 2020. Lab manual, this um, uh, chapter starts on page 153. It's a lot of information, folks. So, um, it's great, great information. Knowing how to control the growth of um, unwanted or harmful microbes is so important. So um, it's broken into two, into two lab days. So the first lab day, we're going to look at UV irradiation of bacteria to kill them. And this is a technique they're actually using in hospitals, for example, to decontaminate patients' rooms that might be contaminated with Clostridium difficile endospores, which are really tough to kill. And then um, in another video, we'll be discussing the dis diffusion technique, and this is a way to test chemicals to see if they can inhibit or kill bacteria. And um, the, the first dis diffusion technique will be um, done using different antiseptics and disinfectants. And then the, the um, third experiment, which would be the second lab, would be the Kirby-Bauer antibiotic sensitivity testing. And again, this is a dis diffusion study. Okay, folks, so we're going to do the UV irradiation experiment. So that is described on page. It's described on page 159, folks. So this is um, using ultraviolet radiation to kill bacteria. And I'm going to have you refer to our um, lecture PowerPoint, the Microbial Genetics Part 2 PowerPoint, um, and the section on mutations. Um, for in that section, we describe what kind of damage short wavelength UV irradiation causes. And by short wavelength, folks, I mean about 254 to 260 nanometers. It's at that wavelength that the maximum energy is absorbed by DNA. And you'll recall from lecture that the UV irradiation causes thymine dimers to form. And that's when two neighboring thymines on the same DNA strand um, they form covalent bonds with one another, and that creates a little buckle in the DNA, and that's going to act as a roadblock for DNA polymerase, so the chromosome can't be replicated. It would also act as a uh, roadblock for RNA polymerase, so you couldn't get transcription. And also, folks, in that um, uh, mut mutations lecture, we talked about how, how um, bacteria have evolved a technique called um, uh, light repair, where this light-activated enzyme called photolyase can um, hydrolyze the covalent bond between the two thymine, um, and then that returns the DNA to its normal state. So that's called light, light repair. And then a second repair mechanism is called dark repair or excision repair. And that's when the E. coli proteins and enzymes recognize that damaged piece of DNA, cut it out, and then DNA polymerase one comes in and synthesizes the, the new undamaged DNA using the opposite strand as a template, and then ligase will covalently link um, the end of that new little, little um, fragment of DNA to the um, pre-existing DNA. So those are the repair mechanisms. So folks, um, to do this, I need a UV light, and there's different UV lights. This one's kind of basic. Um, it's got a metal shield, and you can slide it. Um, if you want long wavelength, we don't want long wavelength, we want short wavelength, so I'm sliding the metal shield, so we're going to have short wavelength being emitted. It's really important, you guys, once we turn these lights on, don't shine them in your eyes or on your skin, because um, it will cause damage to your eyes, um, it will cause thymine dimers in the, the cells of your skin, and can increase your risk for skin cancer. This is why we want to be careful not to get too much sunlight, because there's UV in there, and, and from the long scars on my face, um, I've had two surgeries for skin cancer, and that was probably because as little kids, we were always playing out in the sun. Okay, so we have our UV light. I haven't turned it on yet. We're gonna wait. And then, folks, we had to prepare our plates, and often what people do is they forget to swap their plates. So you recall in an earlier 
um, video, we showed how we swab our plates to get confluent and growth. So we use sterile swabs. We dip them in our broth, and in this case, it's Citrobacter. And you'll recall, you guys, we take off the lids and then we swab the surface of the plate in three directions. And again, our goal is to get confluent growth. We want the bacteria so crowded together that when they start growing and dividing, all of their colonies um, will will um, touch one another, and that will create this lawn of bacteria. It's like frosting the surface of the plate. And then, folks, um, we're going to run two different, well, actually three different UV exposures. One of the plates I'm going to label on the bottom. I'm going to divide it in half, and on one of the plates I'll put zero minute um, UV, and this is going to be our negative control. We're going to cover up that half of the plate with a cart so it won't be irradiated. So this is our negative control to make sure that the culture was actually alive. And then the other side, you guys, this will be our one minute UV exposure side. So we'll expose the cells on the surface for one minute uh, to UV light. And then the second plate, folks, again, we have our zero minute exposure or negative control. We want to radiate that side, make sure the cells are alive. And then we're going to radi um, radiate the other um, half of the plate. We'll irradiate those cells for four minutes. Okay. Now, for my negative control, I need a. a um, an index card and what we'll do is we're gonna when we perform the experiment folks we have to take the lids off the plates because the UV can't penetrate through the plastic so that's another mistake sometimes folks forget we're gonna have to take the lids off and then I'll place my index card over the zero minute side of the plate right that's I don't want to irradiate that side okay so let me just go ahead and set this up folks so oops let me start with the uh, the one minute plate, okay? So I'm gonna set it um, face up on my bench. I'm not gonna take the lid off quite yet. I've got my index card. Um, the other thing folks I'll need is a, a light stand. So I'm just gonna use my Photo Atlas binder here. That's about 12 inches above the surface of the plate. So I'm gonna, when I turn my light on, I'm gonna hold the light on. It's hard to see. Let me tip this up just a little bit more. I'll hold the um, UV light right over the plate, right? And that's going to be about about um, 12 inches. Okay, now I'm just going to reposition this, folks. Okay, so let us then start with our zero minute, one minute plate. So um, let me turn on the light. Now it's important, folks, that you don't look into the light, right? Because it damages your eyes. You don't want to shine it on your skin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on and to see if it's on, I'm just going to lift the light up a little bit. And can I'm not sure if you can see that, but you can see that um, that glow, that purple glow. That's telling me the light's on. And again, I don't want to look into the light. I right? don't want to cause damage. So then, folks, I'm going to start with my my um, zero minute and one minute plate. I'm going to take the lid off. Right, we got to take the lids off. Right. And then I'm going to cover the zero minute side with my index card because I don't want that to be irradiated. I'll set up my stand and now you guys I'm going to hold the light above the one minute exposure and I'm going to time it. Right. And so I know you probably can't see this. But I'm holding, oops, not very evenly, holding the UV light above the one minute side and I'm timing it. Right. So I'm going to expose it to the UV for one minute. And what's happening right now is the poor little cells are getting blasted with this short wavelength uh, UV, and that's causing thymine dimers to form in the chromosomal DNA. So if there's too many thymine dimers, um, what will happen is the little cell can't repair all of those, and so we'll end up, the little cells, um, they won't be able to copy their chromosomes, so they won't be able to replicate, and as we said, they can't carry out transcription, thus indirectly you're knocking out protein synthesis. So what we're hoping is after one minute, we're going to kill enough of the bacteria. So after incubation, when we compare the one minute side to the non-irradiated side, we'll see that there's far fewer colonies on the one minute side. Okay, folks, I'm going to say that that was one minute. So I put my light down. I take my card off my plate. I put the lid on, and I'm going to tape the bottom, um, the bottom to the lid. I'm going to invert it. I'm going to incubate it for 48 hours. And then, folks, I would just repeat that 
with my four minute plate, take the lid off, cover the zero minute side, and then I'm gonna irradiate the four minute side for four minutes, okay, and when I'm finished, take this off, tape the lid to the bottom, invert them, and I'm gonna um, stick them in the incubator. So again, folks, I'll take these home. Hopefully they'll they'll grow in my garage, and then we'll do another movie, okay, showing you the um, the results. And if, and if for whatever reason we can't do that, I'll be able to show you some photographs um, that we download off the internet. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off my UV light, and then, folks, the next one will be um, um, just a brief overview on disc diffusion techniques. And then we'll talk about how we're going to use for our antibiotic sensitivity testing, Kirby Bauer, how we're going to use the um, interpretive table in your lab manual to determine if a um, pathogen isolated from a human sample is sensitive or resistant to antibiotics. Okay, so we're going to stop that one there. Oops, sorry.